Great. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, we're in the technology innovation lab, so this is a, a very much a methods-focused uh, talk. But we're quite interested in detection of uh, RNA modifications, and also I'm very interested in uh, um, assessing RNA structure using direct uh, RNA nanopore sequencing. Okay, so we just had a great introduction to uh, some of the, you know, M6A in particular. Um, so there's been a litany of studies that uh, are, are assessing the, the various changes in, in RNA function based on these modifications, in, in particular for M6A, as we just heard, mRNA export and stability. Um, but also, uh, RNA is, is structured. So over here, I'm showing uh, just a variety of, of different structures. Uh, riboswitches are, are a nice example where the RNA conformation changes uh, depending on whether it binds a small ligand, uh, whether that ligand is present or not. Uh, which can modulate translation. Um, so one way which has been used to study RNA structure is chemical probing methods. And I'll talk about this a little later, um, but uh, uh, these chemical probing methods, uh, in effect, modify the RNA. And so the, the, the common theme here is our, our ability to detect these RNA, RNA modifications will give us a better understanding of, of fundamental RNA biology, its, its modification state, and its structure. Okay, so first I want to talk about our efforts looking um, quite simply at, at just RN ribosomal RNA modifications in E. coli and yeast. Um, so ribosomal RNA is highly modified in, in functionally important regions of the ribosome. So over here I'm showing the, the small subunit on the left and the, the large subunit uh, on the right for E. coli, yeast, and human. And these vertical colored lines are essentially the positions and type of modifications within these subunits. So you can see they progressively increase in number as you go to more complex organisms. The colors are indicating whether the modification is a pseudouridine, a 2-O methylation, or a, a base modification. Um, so these post-transcriptional modifications uh, on ribosomal RNA optimize the interactions with tRNA, mRNA, and, and various translation factors. Um, and a variety of these um, modifications can also be associated with uh, altered translation, uh, particularly in cancer and other diseases like treacher collins. Um, okay, so uh, just going back one sec, the, the reason why we want to look at ribosomal RNA is, is precisely because of these modifications. They, they're, uh, the locations are precisely known and, and um, they're well validated with orthogonal methods like mass spec. Okay, so we're, we're just uh, purifying uh, ribosomal RNA, and we poly-A tail it. Uh, we don't have to do any enrichment because it's highly abundant, and we port this directly into the direct RNA uh, sequencing protocol. We also generated IVT controls for comparison with the, the native RNA uh, to aid in detection of these, uh, these modifications. And so what I'm showing here is the, the quality score versus the length uh, for, for E. coli and yeast. Uh, for the IVT and the native RNA. So you can see streaks approximately at the regions of the small and large subunit for each organism individually. Okay. Um, so the tool we use is, is Tombo, and we use this, this tool to uh, take our raw signal and align it to our in vitro transcribed controls. And we look for signal perturbation between the two samples. Uh, and I'm showing in, in this uh, Tombo plot here an example of uh, position 1402. Uh, which is a dimethyl uh, cytosine, which I'll, I'll return to in a, in a few slides. But you see for the, for the native uh, ribosomal RNA, there's a perturbation at that site. And just a little bit further downstream, there's an M M5C, which the, the signal is, is not so well localized there, kind of highlighting the challenges associated with detection of these modifications. Sometimes you don't always get the signal perturbation at the expected site. Um, now, something else that we, we were really interested uh, to look at and, and find is that the dwell times um, for these molecules can be perturbed by modifications as well. So what, uh, what I'm plotting here on the right is uh, the native uh, mean dwell time as a function of position for the small subunit um, and, and also the IVT in orange. And you can see where, I, where I've starred there, there's a large change uh, precisely at 14, position 1412 which is interestingly uh, 10 nucleotides away from this dimethyl uh, cytosine modification. Um, 
I'll, I'll get back to that in a little bit, but we wanted to show that we could look at all of these modifications uh, in, in the small and large subunit for both E. coli and yeast. And uh, so basically we do a, a statistical test, a KS test, um, and we perform this across all these positions. Again, I'm showing the, the modification sites and their class as vertical colored lines, whether it's a base, 2-O-methyl, or pseudouridine. And we perform this using uh, both Tombow and NanoPolish. And you can see the peaks in this KS uh, profile correspond very well with, with the known locations of these modifications uh, for the current and for the dwell time as well. But we wanted to look a little bit closely, uh, closer, and so we, we extracted these um, uh, site-specific KS profiles and averaged them and aligned them across different uh, modification classes. Again, the base uh, 2-O-methyl and pseudouridine, which are the colors in these graphs. So the, the, the top um, row is, is uh, the current, and as expected, we see a, a, a peak of KS, uh, this effect size, at zero, which is uh, effectively the, the pore constriction. Now, interestingly, when we look at the dwell times, uh, we see a, a somewhat smaller peak at, at the, uh, uh, the constriction of the pore as well, but we see uh, secondary peaks 10 nucleotides away, uh, and we see this both with Tombow and NanoPolish. Um, and uh, to a degree, the base uh, modifications are not well detected 10 nucleotides away, but the uh, 2-O-methyl and the pseudouridine modifications are. So what, what does this 10 nucleotides mean? What is, what's going on here? Uh, effectively, this is the distance between the nanopore constriction and the motor protein active site, is what I'm calling it. Essentially, this is uh, this, the site within the motor protein that's sensitive to these types of modifications. Um, so this is interesting. We can detect certain types of modifications with dwell times alone. Um, but I do want to have a, add a ca caveat here is that for completely unmodified RNAs in vitro transcribed, uh, there's also dwell time specific effects on sequence alone. So here I'm ranking the, um, the sequence content of a small trimer within the, the motor protein active site. And effectively, we see that uh, for the highest dwell time percentiles, they're enriched for G residues, uh, uh, signifying to us that potentially there's steric effects that uh, increased dwell times or uh, single-stranded stacking between uh, these uh, purine residues, which, which increase the dwell time as well. So there's uh, some caution, cautionary note there. Okay, so coming back to this 1402 modification, this is really interesting to us because in E. coli, uh, this, this modification actually is completed through a process of two different enzymatic events. RS RSMH, which adds the base methylation, and RSMI, which adds the 2-0 two, two, uh, two sugar uh, methylation. Um, and so we, we actually see these uh, intermediate steps if we plot the single molecule standard uh, deviation of the current versus the current. That's what I'm showing here in these density plots. In blue is the uh, in vitro transcribed uh, molecule, and, in, and then in orange and red is the, uh, the native. So this is very interesting. This is also known to be a late modification in the three prime domain. So it's, it's interesting that we see, uh, even in the native sample, some completely unmodified C residues followed by a monomethylated state. We can't really tell apart whether it's the base or the, or the 2-O uh, methylation. And then finally, the, the most prevalent modification is the full complete dimethyl, dimethyl modification. OK, so now I'll talk about uh, our, our efforts uh, to detect RNA structure using nanopore sequencing. So like I said earlier, um, we use chemical probing methods to look at this. Uh, traditionally, how this is done with uh, short read approaches is through a technique called shape map, which is, uh, stands for selective 2 prime hydroxyl acylation analyzed by primer extension. And so typically how this works is you have a folded RNA and you apply a, a shape chemical, a, a chemical probe, which uh, uh, selectively adds an adduct at flexible residues within a folded RNA. And then typically RT is performed in the presence of manganese, and mutations are introduced in the corresponding cDNA at positions of shape adducts within the RNA. Uh, you can generate a library and sequence this and do mutation counting to get a shape profile, which can then be used to inform bioinformatic RNA folding algorithms. So this is a great technique and has generally worked uh, fairly well, but there's a few drawbacks. It's a bulk technique, so we're averaging over a, a large population of single molecules. It's uh, challenging to ascertain long-range long structural information. 
And there's also RT bias uh, in, in this process. And as a result, the mutational efficiency is, is low. Um, so we initially had tried some, some common shape probes uh, in direct RNA uh, nanopore experiments, and we did not have a lot of luck. Uh, so we kind of went back to the drawing board and have to, had to look for other putative probes that we could use that maybe uh, the, the reason why we didn't have a lot of luck was because we weren't getting full full length reads. The yield was much lower, um, so we had to kind of go back and, and see if there were other alternative probes um, that might work. And the reason why we thought they didn't work is because, uh, in general, the standard shape probes have a large, bulky adduct that's added to the two prime hydroxyl. Um, and so what we came up with is, is uh, we, we identified this chemical 1AI, which is one, a, no a novel shape probe, which I'll show, but also has a much smaller adduct. So it's essentially just an acetyl group that gets added onto the ribose sugar. Um, and so we validated this by doing shape map, bulk, short read sequencing on uh, 16S and 23S. It also permeates cells, uh, membrane, and nuclei. So we probed the structure of UN uh, spliceosomal complex. You can see here there's a, a decent correlation between that and NAI, which is another well-known um, cell permeable probe. Okay, so uh, we call this method nano shape. So we're using this, this new chemical and essentially we just apply it to a folded RNA and poly A tail uh, uh, the RNA and, and port this through the standard direct RNA protocol uh, for nanopore sequencing. And in this case, all we've done so far is, is a test construct, which here is a micro RNA cluster, which is a fairly simple structure of, of uh, six or seven or so uh, hairpins. Um, so it's a nice uh, construct that we can in vitro transcribe to, to demonstrate the method, and it has a fairly well-known simple structure. Okay, so how does the data look? Well, um, th here I'm showing the untreated uh, quality score versus read length heat map, and then uh, the NAI treated at a low and a high concentration, and then at uh, one AI low and high uh, concentration. And what you see is the untreated clearly has the most full length reads, um, but uh, the, the other modified samples, NAI and 1AI, have, have less full-length reads, but NAI is very difficult to get full-length reads, and again, I think this is because of the bulky adduct uh, that I mentioned previously. Whereas with 1AI, we get um, more uh, full-length reads and generally um, uh, higher quality. Now, it's interesting that we, we see for the 1AI samples a slight shift in the, in the time it takes for the, the RNA to transit through the pore, so that, again, this is um, indicative of uh, dwell, dwell time effects, so we see stalling. Um, if you take the positional, uh, the dwell time um, profile as a function of position and do a cross correlation with the shape map profile, um, again, we see this 10 nucleotide offset uh, in this cross correlation for both of our samples, indicating that it is, again, the motor protein that's hitting these modification sites and stalling uh, very slightly as it transits through the pore. Okay, so we, we use these, um, uh, these dwell times to reconstruct uh, the, the, the RNA structure, and we can compare them between uh, our method nano shape uh, to, to map, and the agreement is fairly good. So in gray, I'm showing predicted contacts based on the, um, uh, in gray is the shared contacts between uh, the bulk map and the nanopore data, and uh, contacts unique to the, the Mutational profiling are in green, and purple is for uh, uh, nano shape. So here you can see the, the, the hairpin structures are fairly, fairly well formed, and we see high reactivity in the, in the loop regions and in um, uh, some of the internal bulges, as we would expect. All right, so that's where we're at. Um, uh, as for the, the ribosomal arm, uh, RNA modifications, we observe that we, you know, these 2 methyl modifications can generate pause profiles, uh, distance, the registration distance from the pore constriction, uh, and also we can see uh, substoichiometric modifications. And for nano shape, we've identified this new chemical, um, which is not only a shape map reagent, so for bulk experiments, but also shown that it can work in uh, uh, direct RNA nanopore sequ sequencing experiments. And so with that, I'll uh, end and thank the, a lot of the people who helped with this work, and uh, I'll take any questions if you have it. Thank you.